greeting. Very, very busy month, October, Halloween. One uh, huge project was getting haunted, uh, finished the, a new horror magazine. Of course, you may know that I uh, created Tomb Magazine for Jason Crawley, and that's doing very well. But I've got an overflow of scripts, uh, story ideas that uh, don't necessarily fit in there. So it's another 52-page magazine that I mainly filled myself. Uh, my son Mark helped me with this story. He's running the camera right now. I uh, did the breakdowns for it. Uh, we have some stories that are basically unrecognizable as Hoffman. There's no real artwork in this one. It's a uh, creepy thing about a serial killer, the drawings that he does for the psychiatrist, the houses that he's been tortured in. And um, Anyway, it's selling very well. There's a Facebook page for it. We'll give you the link for that. That's one new thing. Another new thing, I uh, got the idea. It's such a hassle sometimes shipping the large prints. Not that I'm complaining about you guys buying them or anything. Um, see, here's a new one. This is a new Halloween painting. I have a print of it. So, when I... Uh, have to ship the painting, uh, ship the print rather, I mean I put it in a sleeve, I have to get cardboard from somewhere, I cut the cardboard, I tape everything up, it's pretty time consuming, uh, it takes time away from the time I could be doing artwork, um, so I thought hey why not go with a smaller print format, uh, people can store them more easily in comic boxes and things like that, this is one of them, uh, Wicked Witches, set of eight color prints and you know they're nice it's a nice size and it's easy to work with it's easy to look at um, I sign them too a little backing board in there um, so that's one set and the other set is um, the clump family which is sort of like an Adams family thing I won't pull those out and show them to you but um, I did all that artwork on clipboards uh, over the years. There's eight plates in there as well. Not that I'm trying to sell anything to you. Um, anyway, as I said, busy, busy, busy for Halloween. Done all kinds of paintings to help keep the wolf from the door. Uh, here's one, Bride of Frankenstein. That's uh, 11 by 14. And um, here's the one that you just saw the print of. That's actually on eBay right now. You compare. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hoffman does it again. This is uh, one of the sort of humorous ones. Um, Halloween UFO. And uh, this idea just came to me. Uh, popped into my head. Fully formed. Long body with the wings and the multiple feet and everything else and the trick-or-treaters enough to make you think that the ideas are being given to you by aliens, the way these things pop into your head sometimes. Uh, this one's called Bad Monster. The monster tipped over the cauldron and is in big trouble. This is a sort of a... I'm not really into the, the living dead stuff so much. It's such a cliche these days. You see it everywhere. But uh, in this case, um, I gave it a sort of humorous slant and there, thereby sort of enjoy doing it and don't tell anyone but this may be the cover for haunted number two so can you imagine that on there with the logo yeah so we'll see about that here's a technique I haven't done in quite a while it's um, ink on illustration board so I did ink wash all over and then I did um, watercolor on top of that and we also have a print of this this sold on eBay recently did very well so that's part of it, kids. A lot of work. And on the tail end of it, I did this painting, which is a sort of a oceanic theme, like a, mytholo a mythological uh, titan, I think you call them. Um, sort of just an exercise thing to get away from the Halloween thing for a minute. I did that the other day while uh, my wife was grocery shopping. What else? Oh, here's a little something I made. Um, 
little cutouts that stand up, little figures. There's a woman, there's a man. Here, get down low. Let's and um, these these are real stock poses, but um, the idea being that, of course, you can damn it, set them up. There's a cat of some kind, and pterodactyls. It has some buildings and sets and stuff like that as well. So you just kind of move them around, and uh, you can come up with some compositions that may be novel. So that was something. I'm going to pursue that a little more too. Now also we did a um, Kickstarter program campaign, the very first one we've ever done for a Halloween art book. Can't show you the book because it's not here yet, but the campaign was a success. Went over the, um, over the goal. And uh, so anyway, hopefully Kickstarter and Patreon, once we get these things going, are going to give me a lot more freedom and a lot less sort of uh, slaving away, shall we say. Here's a, uh, an order of a fellow recently won this drawing on eBay last night, I think, actually. Um, it's an Edgar Rice Burr sort of thing. You know, I have the rough around here for this somewhere. Where the hell is it? I don't know. I don't think I can put my hands on it right now. But uh, anyway, he won that, and then he bought a uh, Magnus Robot Fighter print. And then for doing that, he gets another free print. And then he also gets some promo materials, Clump Family, Wicked Witch, and um, a card from my, what's it called, uh, Pod Party, you know what the title card? Yeah, my pod party card set and a spooky cool uh, school card. So this is what you get when you buy stuff. You get a lot of extra freebies. So that goes out tomorrow. Hey, here's my stack of sketches that have not yet been turned into anything. So I don't know if this will or not. I keep these on. Oh these on hand, that's pretty good. That'd be nice. It's a nice pose. But um, I've got a new drawing technique. I'm always developing these things. And this one has uh, helped me immensely with working with figures. Can you get over here? And uh, typically what happens with drawing techniques is uh, the, the, the main thing is to have the immovable masses. So you've got the chest mass, you've got the hip mass, and you've got the head mass. And this is more or less how, you know, the books teach you to draw, right? Well, because of the body's bilateral symmetry, basically every mass is not really one mass, it's two masses. So the rib cage has one, two sides, hips have two sides. And I actually saw this in a book on drawing for little kids. They said, um, and what they suggested was drawing figures to draw the hips as two masses. I said, well, that's interesting. So I tried that. So anyway, when you draw hips as two masses, you draw one first. Now when you draw the other one, it um, tells you what the slant is, what the relationship of the sides. So you, you basically get a new twist that you might not have anticipated if you were just doing the regular masses. So, for example, here's hips. Now here's the rib cage, and here's the head. And see, I'm getting a twist here with the head that I might not have gotten. I've got, I'm getting a, another nice twist here simply because I'm treating the masses as sort of binary pairs. So I don't know if that's necessarily all that interesting to everyone or not, but it's uh, enabled me to cook up some new poses, new ideas, keep things fresh, and hopefully do some drawings that are uh, continually improving and evolving and getting better. Yeah, okay.